Hey everybody, in calculus, you gotta know the chain rule. Here's the big question. How do you find the derivative of a composition of functions? Let's look at an example. Suppose y equals the quantity of 2x plus 3 squared. With our current knowledge, if we wanted to find the derivative of this, we would have to expand the algebra and then use the power rule. That would give us y prime equals 8x plus 12. Well, that wasn't so bad, right? But what if the function y was the quantity of 2x plus 3 to the 50th power? Nobody wants to expand the algebra here, so there has to be a fast way to find the derivative. That's where we're going to use the chain rule. The chain rule says the derivative of f of g of x equals f prime of g of x times g prime of x. This lets us find the derivative of a composition of functions. Let's apply this to the previous example. y equals the quantity of 2x plus 3 to the 50th power. What we're going to do first is dissect this function into its components. The outer function, f of x, equals x to the 50th. The inner function, g of x, equals 2x plus 3. So f of g of x equals 2x plus 3 to the 50th power. Now let's take the derivative of f of x and g of x. f prime of x equals 50x to the 49th power, and g prime of x equals 2. Now we can apply the chain rule to find the derivative of the composition. Remember the chain rule is f prime of g of x times g prime of x. In this case, that would give us 50 times 2x plus 3 to the 49th power times 2. Then we can multiply the 50 times 2 to get our final answer. y prime is 100 times the quantity of 2x plus 3 to the 49th power. So here's a general strategy for the chain rule. Take the derivative of the outside function, but keep the inside function as is. Then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Let's try another example. Suppose y equals the quantity of 5x cubed plus 2x to the 8th power. When we apply the chain rule, we first take the derivative of the outside function. That would give us 8 times the quantity of something to the 7th power. But that something is just the inner function, so we can fill that in. That leaves us with 8 times the quantity of 5x cubed plus 2x to the 7th power. Now we multiply by the derivative of the inside function, and the derivative of the inside is 15x squared plus 2. Now we have the derivative of y. What if we had a function like this? y equals the square root of x to the fifth plus 3. Well, we have an outside function, radical x, and an inside function, x to the fifth plus 3. So we first take the derivative of the outer function, and that would give us 1 half times x to the negative 1 half, but we replace the x with the inner function, which is x to the fifth plus 3. Then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is 5x to the fourth. Now we can simplify our answer. y prime equals 5x to the fourth divided by the square root of x to the fifth plus 3. Now suppose we have an example like this. Suppose h of x equals f of g of x. Find h prime of 3. Notice that we're only given a table of values. So first we need to find the derivative of h. But h is a composition of functions, so we're going to use the chain rule. h prime equals f prime of g of x times g prime of x. Now we can substitute 3 for all the x's. h prime of 3 equals f prime of g of 3 times g prime of 3. Now we can go to the table to find values. g of 3 equals 8, so h prime of 3 equals f prime of 8 times g prime of 3. f prime of 8 equals negative 3, and g prime of 3 equals negative 7. Now h prime of 3 equals 21, and that's our final answer. So in summary, the derivative of f of g of x equals f prime of g of x times g prime of x. This means take the derivative of the outer function with the inner function remaining the same and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. In the next video, we're going to look at another form of the chain rule, which says that dy dx equals dy du times du dx. But for now, go ahead and practice the techniques that we learned in this video. And that's how you rock calculus! Calculus!